Do you recognize this sound? Well, if you said Honda's VTEC, then you're right. But what is VTEC exactly? Though it's been called many things, the VTEC acronym really stands for Variable Valve Timing and Lift Electronic Control. But VVTLEC doesn't quite sound as sexy as the more well-known abbreviation. It may also surprise you to know that the technology behind VTEC originated from Honda's motorcycle division, and none of it had anything to do with their automobile engines. Early on, Honda's engineers knew that four-valve engines made great top-end power, but that two-valve variants were much more capable at low RPM range and idle. Let's dive deeper into what this means exactly. In a standard four-stroke engine, the intake and exhaust valves are actuated by lobes on a camshaft. And the shape of the lobes determine the timing, lift, and duration of each valve. Timing refers to the angle of measurement of when a valve is opened or closed as it relates to the piston's position either top dead center or bottom dead center. Lift refers to how much the valve is opened. And duration refers to how long the valve is kept open. Additionally, air-fuel mixtures behave differently before and after combustion which impacts the physical limitations on their flow. Coupled with ignition spark, optimal valve timing, lift, and duration settings under low RPM operation are very different from those under high RPM conditions. For example, the optimal low RPM valve timing lift and duration settings would result in an inefficient air-fuel mixture inside the cylinder at high RPM, thus considerably limiting engine power output. Conversely, optimal high RPM valve timing lift and duration settings would result in a very rough low RPM operation and difficult idling. The ideal engine would have fully variable valve timing, lift, and duration in which the valves would always open at exactly the right point, lift high enough and stay open just the right amount of time for the engine speed and load in use. This sparked the quest for a 500cc engine that would rev effortlessly to 11,000 RPM but could also hold a smooth idle at 1,000 RPM. The result was what Honda internally labeled Hyper VTEC, which was introduced in the CBR400 in 1983. The technology allowed for only one intake and one exhaust valve per cylinder to operate below certain engine speeds, but for another pair of intake and two exhaust valves per cylinder to function above that threshold. The evolution of this new technology continued when in March 1984, Honda launched the NCE program which aimed to push the limits of top-end torque performance without sacrificing low-end power. The result of this particular project materialized in the 1985 Civic and Integra engines released exclusively in the Japanese market. The success of the new concept engine project convinced Honda's engineers that a dual camshaft profile or a mechanism that could dynamically alter camshaft timing must be a part of the company's next generation of engines. The goal would be to have better fuel economy and higher output across the entire power band. Initially, this goal was set specifically for 90 horsepower per liter. However, based on the suggestion of the then Honda R&D president, a higher goal of 100 horsepower per liter was set. This was considered a lofty proposition considering conventional engines in those days could only produce 70 or 80 horsepower per liter. Honda engineers knew this wasn't going to be an easy task since an engine becomes subjected to higher load as RPM increases. Also, adding the complication of quality assurance target of 15 years or 250,000 kilometers for a mass production engine. After all that, another goal was officially set that the new VTEC engine would make 160 horsepower and have an 8,000 RPM redline. This all led to disagreements among Honda engineers on whether such an engine was even possible. After three months, the lead engineer of the project put it all on the line, ordering his team to move forward. The aim to push the limits of top-end torque production without sacrificing low-end performance eventually would be realized when the new VTEC technology was official and featured in the 1989.5 Integra XSI, which used the 160 brake horsepower dual overhead cam B16A engine. That same year, Europe saw the arrival of VTEC in the Honda Civic and Honda CRX 1.6i VT using a 150 brake horsepower B16A1 variant. The United States market saw its first VTEC system with the introduction of the 1991 Acura NSX, which used a 3 liter dual overhead cam C30A V6, outputting 270 brake horsepower. 
Dual overhead cam VTEC engines soon appeared in other vehicles, such as a 1992 Acura Integra GSR, making 160 brake horsepower, and later in the 1993 Honda Prelude VTEC, producing 195 brake horsepower, and the Honda Del Sol VTEC, which made 160 brake horsepower. And from 1995 to 2000, the legendary Integra Type R, initially available in the Japanese market, produced 197 brake horsepower, using a B18C 1.8 liter engine. At the time, the Integra Type R was producing more horsepower per liter than most supercars. Fun fact, the Integra Type R was introduced as a 1997 model to the US market under the Acura brand, but with the only option being air conditioning. Let's shift our focus and understand the principle behind VTEC and how it works exactly. In this explanation, we will use a dual overhead cam engine and focus on one pair of valves since the operation is identical to the others. Normally, an engine would have two rocker arms for the two valves shown. But in a VTEC engine, there is an additional rocker arm that lives between the original ones. The main difference is that this additional rocker arm does not have a valve associated with it like the other arms do. Also, it appears not to have any purposeful function. More on this later. Each rocker arm moves up and down by a cam lobe that's clocked with the rotation of the engine itself. Cam lobes are shaped similar to the shape of an egg. As the high point of the lobe pushes on one end of the rocker arm, it also pushes the valve open. And as the cam lobe rotates and the lowest shape end of the lobe comes around, the valve begins to close. The interesting thing here is that the middle rocker arm has a cam lobe with a significantly different shape compared to the other two. When the engine is in the low RPM range, the intake and exhaust valves open and close by the regular rocker arms. While this happens, the middle rocker arm is moving up and down, independently of the others, with absolutely no result from its movement. When the engine revs increase to a predetermined level and certain conditions are met, a series of small hydraulic pins inside some of the rocker arms are forced to move across and lock into the arms next to them. Effectively, this action locks all three rocker arms together, so they all move as one large arm. And since the center cam lobe causing the middle rocker arm to move up and down is larger than the two other lobes, it's now forcing the valves to open sooner, close later, and increase valve lift, according to the center cam lobe profile. This action allows the engine to breathe more effectively at higher engine revs and increased performance. Not to mention VTEC. Now, this was a simplified explanation of the engineering behind VTEC, but does illustrate the principle pretty well. To this day, you can find robust aftermarket support for Honda's VTEC series of engines, and it remains a favorite with enthusiasts because it's reliable, easy to maintain, and delivers so much performance for its engine size.